Welcome along guys. Well here we have what could be considered almost a bit of a classic. <laughs> this is a Suzuki GSX-S 1000. Now this bike came out in 2015. Last time I rode this bike was in 2015. Things have moved on. It's five years later. This bike is still available to purchase in more or less the same guise that it came out in 2015. How does this bike stack up against the latest and greatest Super Nakeds? You can now pick one of these up for £9,700. An absolute bargain. It's 147 brake horsepower, 108 newton metres of torque, and it's got that Suzuki reliability and DNA throughout the whole bike. Let's go take this bike out for a spin and see how it stacks up against the latest and greatest. Chopsy, roll the intro. So you have to bear in mind, this bike is based on the 2005 GSX-R 1000, the K5 GSX-R, considered, you know, one of the best ever GSX-Rs produced. The first thing you notice when you jump on this bike is it's the same with a lot of Suzuki's. I'm a massive Suzuki fan. I mean, I've had the new GSX-R. I, what I love about Suzuki's is just the quality feel you get when you're riding them. And when I started this up, you know, the clutch is lovely, the controls are beautiful. It's all very, very well engineered. The feel from the bike is really well engineered. It's, they are lovely to ride. And this is something I've always said about Suzuki's, and the GSX-S is no different. It's got that nice Suzuki quality feel to it. The engines sound like sewing machines, they're so smooth. The riding position is also very, very comfortable. You're quite upright, the seat's quite sculpted. It feels like you're sort of fitted into the seat. I don't think there'd be too much option to move around so much in the seat. You're sort of locked in a little bit. But the rest of the ergos, the bars are really high, really wide. Rental fat bars on this. They're coming up quite high, so you can sort of lock your arms. You know, it's, it's a nice, comfortable position. Perhaps not as sporty feeling as the likes of the Tuono, but it's definitely a road-based, comfortable bike. You get that feel from it straight away. Mid-range power from that engine is pretty good. It's much more... It's much more responsive than the CBR1000R, which I think Honda have overgeared that bike. This is geared nicely. It's got a bit of torque. It's got a bit of drive when you open the throttle. That really was one of my criticisms with the CBR. The CB, sorry, the CB1000. It lacked a little bit of a low down pickup. This isn't like that. It's got that low down drive. It's not like V4 Tuono punch. You know, it's a, it takes a little bit to wind up. It is a straight four. It's just a straight four, no variable valve timing. But it's got, it gets there pretty darn quickly. The brakes <laughs> are also Brembo. The suspension is fully adjustable, but it's a little bit soft. I think it's definitely geared up, you know, for the for the road. Certainly not to be used on track, but it's soft, it's pliable, it's fully adjustable. You can improve it, you know. Changes direction quite nicely. It feels a little bit slow. The bike is 209 kilos wet, so it is also a couple of kilos lighter than the CB as well. The CB is also, I think, about four brake horsepower less than this, and the CB is a little bit less torque than this, and the CB is 11 and a half grand. So, you know, for 97, you start to see the appeal of this machine compared to its rivals. Because it's old school, there's no electronic quick shifters and blippers, you know, it's not even an option on this machine, a quick shifter and blipper. <laughs> you can't even get one. You have to look after market if you want a quick shifter and blipper. But I can forgive it that, you know, the gearbox is so nice, the clutch feels so nice. It's nice to have a, to sometimes go back to doing the old fashioned way and, and changing manually. Yeah, 
Yeah, nice bit of punch in the mid-range. Oh, she's eager, eager to the lift over the bumps. Yeah, it's a really nice fun bike. One of my criticisms with it, and it, you know, this was the same really when it came out, a lot of people mentioning snatchy throttle response on this bike. It's something they seem to get, get their heads around a bit with the Katana. I didn't notice it quite as much on that. I think they changed the throttle grip slightly. But on this bike, there is a little bit of snatchiness. Now it's only really around, it's fine at the bottom end, it's fine at this revs. It's if you're in the sweet spot, about five or six grand, that's when you'll notice it's a little bit jerky on the throttle. You know, all of the, uh, the new modern bikes these days, the throttle response is really, really good. This is behind because it's got that old design. So if I was to buy one of these, it would be a bike I'd probably get shipped or a power commander just to smooth out that mid-range throttle response because it's not perfect it's much better than it was but it's still not perfect so it's here five grand plus it's a little bit jerky so on these sorts of country lanes where you're leaving it bubbling because you want to have the instant power it's not terrible, but it's not perhaps as smooth as some of the modern stuff. Oh, that motor absolutely screams. It howls. Sounds absolutely beautiful. I can only imagine how nice it would sound with some sort of pipe on it. Let's try and give it a bit of an open up. <laughs> Listen to that airbox roar. Yeah, it's, it's not the ultimate handling machine. There's a little bit of flex in the chassis, perhaps, and a little bit, the suspension does wallow you around a little bit, but for that money, you could invest a bit in the suspension, get a cartridge kit, maybe change the rear shock. You know, that's the thing. At that price, you can really budget playing with this a little bit. got a lot it's geared very well Suzuki always do that they always gear their bikes perfectly a mistake Honda always make Honda always over gear them good job Suzuki this is geared beautifully so the displays are fairly simple LCD display in keeping when this bike came out in 2015 you've got a fuel gauge you know with blobs so you know pretty pretty accurate fuel gauge as well from what I've seen you know miles per gallon you're doing i don't think it's got a range till empty so you know it's fairly basic temperature gauge shows the level of traction you're on and uh, and the time so uh, and the gear indicator we've got a gear indicator yeah and a gear indicator so everything you need everything you're ever going to need just in a fairly basic way of displaying it now as i mentioned you can get this bike for nine thousand seven hundred pound you know it's, it's a ridiculous amount of money. There's a thousand pound off on all of the Suzuki's at the moment. I don't know if they're trying to clear some old stock. I don't know if we can expect to see a new version of this bike soon. I really hope so. I really hope so because, you know, they've got the new GSXR has been out for a few years now. So you really would expect to see that new GSXR engine as the platform to Suzuki's, you know, main super naked. So I think this bike is definitely due for a revamp. Five years in motorcycle development terms is huge. I mean, this thing has traction control, but there's no IMUs. There's, there's three levels of traction control, you know, just one, two, three, and off. And the traction control is pretty rudimentary, I would say. You know, the, the, uh, technology has moved on leaps and bounds in the last five years, and the electronics is one of those areas which is Got me the latest electronics on the latest release bikes are truly incredible. Now this is lacking a little bit, but that's reflected in the price. Second gear, ready for the overtake. 4,000 revs. Let's see how she pulls. Very well is the answer. 
it's not as punchy because it's a straight floor obviously they're always a little bit flat you've always got to get to the upper echelons of the rev range to really open them up and get the most from them so compared to the likes of the uh, the Triumph Speed Triple it's nowhere near it's not got not much punch as that engine it's probably it's a bit similar the mid-range and pickup is a similar sort of performance to the Street Triple RS I would say it's got that lovely sort of airbox roar that that bike's also got as well but yeah, it's not as punchy as the Speed Triple. It's obviously not as punchy as the Tuono and then the V4 configurations. You know, all the V4 naked. Nowhere near got the, the punch of those. The Twins, of course, deliver a lot more torque. So a, a straight four isn't my first choice for a naked bike because of that mid-range. But they've done a pretty good job with the gearing, with retuning it slightly. That it's, uh, yeah. I could live with it, I could live with it, and perhaps a remap and an exhaust would unleash a little bit more mid-range as well. Right, it's far too wet to really chuck this about, which is a bit of a shame on my favourite hill climb section. It's way too wet. <laughs> I don't want to put this down the road. I think it's just got Dunlop somethings on. I can't remember the tyres it's got, but they're very much, uh, you know, a, a, a street tyre. They're not a performance tyre probably actually quite good in these conditions but uh, I'm not going to push it unfortunately I know it's a little bit wallowy I know it's not the ultimate handling machine anyway so but it's nice it's rewarding to ride in the twisties but you'd probably have to do a little bit of work if you really want to make it handle like the top crop of super nakeds that's a fellow GSX S1000 a fellow appreciator of the Suzuki. Second, look for the other overtake. Oh, yeah! She likes to scream. We'll give it a proper open up in a minute. We'll unleash her fully in a moment. It's a quick bike. <laughs> 147 brake horsepower. It's fast. 209 kilos you know yeah it's slightly heavier than the latest uh, crop of super naked it's slightly down on power but it's still got more power than the speed triple more power than the cb1000 you know this engine it may be what's that 15 years old <laughs> but it still delivers amazing performance let's give it a little bit of an auto 60 test see how that traction control works how it puts that power down what the performance is like at the the upper ends of the rev range let's give it a handful so we've got traction control level one handful whoa yep it's fast <laughs> it's quick Oh, there it was a bit of a wheelie coming on there and then it had a bit of a waggle on as well when it went down I was I confused myself I thought I had a quick shifter for a second and I was like oh, I've got to use the clutch to change gear <laughs> I'm not used to riding these old fangled motorcycles <laughs> it seems weird having to use a clutch when you're doing a fast launch you know it's fine using the clutch when you're just riding around but when you want to do that fast getaway it seems weird to have to use the clutch of course you could just close the throttle and do that but um, yeah you do miss the quick shifter when you really want to give it ultimate performance all right let's pull in here and i'll give you a little walk around so there she is the gsx s i must say i'm liking these colors these more subtle colors rather than the you know the, the, the normal suzuki blue with the uh with sort of the graphite I, what do you call it gun metal i suppose gun metal and then the red wheels really nice brembo calipers the same ones as it looks that are on the uh the gsxr the braking is very good that's one thing suzuki did to these a while ago they added nice brembos to them the master cylinder is nissan now on this bike the gsxr was criticized for having a lot of movement in the brake lever no problem on this i don't know why the gsxs never suffered with the same lever movement problems that the gsxr did it's still got rubber hoses but it doesn't suffer with that same 
brake lever issues. So it's a bit odd, don't quite understand it, but the brakes are perfect on this. There's none of that too much lever movement. Exhaust is underslung, which is nice. You know, it's all hidden away. It's all stainless steel. It's a nice, I like the black of the exhaust as well. It's quite nice. There is that legendary GSXR K5 motor. There's that LCD dashboard. That's all the information you need, but very much old school by today's standards, but it's fine. Everything you need, quite, you know, not too big, clear rev counter, you need nothing more. Suspension is, I think, KYB, looking at the adjusters, but it's adjustable for preload, compression. So it's got preload adjustment here. Uh, I think that's probably compression dampening. At the bottom of the fork, you've got the rebound dampening, so it's fully adjustable suspension. As I mentioned, it does feel a little bit soft. I've not played with the suspension. You can probably add a bit more preload into the front, probably sort it out for me. The rear shock looks like it could be a little bit less adjustability built into it. It's got a preload collar, but I can't see any compression or rebound dampening on that shock. So I think, you know, I think the rear shock, if you want to upgrade or do or spend a bit of money on the bike, probably the rear shock would be the thing to replace, I would say. Lighting. It's no LEDs on here. <laughs> this is all conventional halogen bulbs, you know, even the indicators, conventional indicators. The tail light though, you do get an LED. Tires, I thought they were Dunlops, they're the Dunlop Sport Max. So not a bad rubber actually. Not too bad rubber at all on there. So there she is, the GSX S 1000. Let's jump back on. There we go guys, the GSX S1000, I mean, it may be a five year old design, it may be lacking behind some of its new rivals in there regarding electronics and all of the whiz bang stuff, but if you want a bike which is fundamentally fantastic, brilliant engine, capable chassis-ish, <laughs> A few little mods just to clean up the throttle response, a couple of hundred quid, and you have got one hell of a bike, all for under £10,000. Now that, ladies and gentlemen, is a bargain. This is power level one, which is full power. <laughs> I could do that all day. What have you done here? <laughs> I told you I was scared back there. I've never dropped a bike before in my life. Oh! Backfire! That's it! That's it! <laughs> Listen to me. Oh, oh.